What are the key challenges and opportunities for telecom companies as they navigate the complex landscape of cloud native technologies? Greg Dahl, Director of Product Management for Service Providers at F5, is here to share his insights on the cloud native telco ecosystem and its hurdles. Greg, thank you for being with us today. I want to begin by asking how you would describe F5's role in the cloud native telecom ecosystem. So first of all, F5 in the telco environment, and people know F5, we have about 20,000 customers, uh, but people don't really know how much we do with service providers. We have hundreds of service provider customers, and we do application delivery and security uh, with all parts of service providers. And uh, we say telco, but the reality is that includes also cable companies or MSOs, as we call them in North America. And so we work with their IT department, with their enterprise services, and also with the networking components of telcos. Uh, and those networks obviously are so critical to offer services to consumers, enterprises, and other telcos. The second part to your question is cloud native. So where do we play in cloud native? Uh, we play in multiple layers. So we are part of the platform, we're part of the applications, and we even run our own cloud services. So call it drink your own champagne if you want. So let me give a, a little bit more color on these three things. The first one is we're part of the application. So um, obviously to run cloud native, you need a platform where you're going to run the cloud native functions. So we are part of the platform. We do all the communication uh, within clusters, with the outside of the clusters, the security that goes with it. Uh, so service meshes, ingress, egress. Uh, and in that case, we work with the uh, platform departments at the service providers. Then we have cloud native applications or CNFs, as they are called. In particular, we do security, GILAN, N6LAN. Uh, DNS, CaraGrade NAT, uh, firewalling. Uh, and so we see actually the cloud native challenges from the other side, not from the platform, but from the application themselves. And then the third I mentioned is the our, our running of cloud services with F5 distributed cloud. So that means we have our own network functions and we offer them as a service and we operate the cloud service ourselves. So we basically have uh, for example, SREs, since we're talking about uh, skills for cloud native in, in F5. And so we understand all the challenges uh, of running and operating a cloud service. So that those are the, the different areas. But if you look at where F5 plays with service providers and where we are in different parts of the stack, this gives F5 a really unique position in these new cloud native stacks. So, Greg, we understand that a skill shortage is a major hurdle for telecom companies in seizing cloud native opportunities. What are some of the other significant challenges you see ahead? Yeah, so um, I think Telecom TV ran a survey last year at the, uh, at the Cloud Native Summit, and obviously skills was the number one challenge perceived by participants. But very closely behind, you had basically how you design, implement, operate those cloud native environments. And so uh, this is really something that we're experiencing and helping our customers, our service provider customers address is how you put together those uh, cloud native environments. And I'll zoom in on something more specific. So obviously cloud native, one of the key component of it is Kubernetes, which is the container orchestration solution that powers, it's pretty much the de facto stand up for cloud native. Uh, and uh, it, part of it is Kubernetes networking. So how do I connect those containers, pod services? Uh, and if you think about it, Kubernetes was designed uh, almost 10 years ago by developers, not by networking experts, developers. And so the networking you get from Kubernetes is very basic. But if you think of service providers, uh, they have obviously very complex use cases uh, where they need to communicate with you know, the radio access and the 5G core and the, the various services, et cetera. 
And so this complexity, uh, as well as the complexity of the network integration that, that goes with it, uh, integrating with different VPNs, different tenants, uh, different you know weird protocols like Diameter and Sigtran and SIP, etc., uh, all this complexity doesn't fit very nicely with Kubernetes. And so we call that actually the, the Kubernetes ball of fire. And that means this complexity that leaks outside of the clusters in trying to interconnect those complex applications with complex networking environment. And so part of what we do at the product and, and uh, my team of product managers do is define a solution that abstracts this complexity and addresses this Kubernetes ball of fire uh, so that we have one integration point for all this networking security visibility uh, in as part of Kubernetes. So we didn't want to work around the weaknesses of Kubernetes. We just wanted to extend it so that we can still take advantage of Kubernetes but address this, this complexity, the, this Kubernetes uh, uh, ball of uh, fire. And I really want to focus on that, that ball of fire, the Kubernetes ball of fire. Is this issue specific to telecom applications or does it represent broader challenges with Kubernetes adoption? Well, that's, that's a great question. And obviously, uh, one of the key theme for service providers today is AI, right? So either for their own internal use uh, to, to serve their, their customers and uh, supplement their services, or to offer AI or AI factories as a service, right? Or have local, um, local LLMs in their own language, respecting the, the sovereignty rules that is specific to their country, et cetera, et cetera. And so if you think about it, AI applications, they're all uh, cloud native. So they're all going to have to integrate with Kubernetes. Like 5G applications, they are complex applications uh, with multitude of pods and uh, complex data management. Like 5G applications, they have to integrate in uh, uh, sophisticated environments. Those AI factories will have different tenants, different operational groups in the service provider, uh, different networks. Uh, and also, they will need very, very uh, strong performances, right? Like in uh, in 5G CNFs, I have to run at very high throughput with a very, very large number of sessions and subscribers. Same thing happened with AI, even in a, in a, at a higher scale. And so if you see all the challenges that we've experienced with running 5G on cloud in a cloud native way, those same challenges, integrating those complex AI applications uh, with the platform and with Kubernetes, those are exactly the same challenges. So I, I like to say that the 5G applications are more race cars. They are not your everyday car. Same thing happens for AI applications. They're also race cars, very demanding applications that need some unique solutions to address their need. And so obviously AI has got also different requirements, additional requirements that we don't see in 5G. Uh, in particular, the AI infrastructure, the hardware that powers those factories is unique, right? Uh, if you think of uh, the GPUs and other hardware components that are there, it's very critical that whatever software solutions that we built to address cloud native can be optimized and perform at the maximum speed by leveraging the, the hardware that's specific for AI. So that's not going to be something we discuss at the summit this year, but I expect for the next summit, it's going to be all over the place. Challenges and opportunities ahead indeed. Greg, thank you very much for your insights today. Thank you.